विनोदकारी पल पन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह पुलगनश्याम महाराज ने जय हरे कृष्ण महाराज ने जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान ने जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी आर बिलवेड गनश्याम महाराज पाथमेकर टू आर लिबरेशन आर एट मोस्ट डियर पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य संतो इन ऑल यू भक्त जय स्वामी नारायण टुडे वी बी कंडक्टिंग यू आर कोर्स नंबर नाइन व्हिच कंसिस्ट ऑफ थ्री पार्ट्स a kirtan then a vat from kalyankaniga and then stories from the life of puja guru ji first getting right into it this course 9 kirtan is composed by premanand swami and it's hare hari krishna hayano mare hare che ji ho joine jeevu chu sundar murti re This is a description of Hari Hari Krishna Maharaj who resides in Vartal and there is a very very famous story regarding Hari Krishna Maharaj that I would like to share with all of you the kirtan you'll be able to find in your PDF packet but uh the kirtan's lines pretty much just describe Bhagwan's murti uh how how uh luminous it is how great it is and Uh, how alluring it is and hari krishna maharaj who resides in vartal you know each and every mandir in the swaminarayan sampraday that bhagwan swaminarayan instilled installed himself constructed in his era about 200 200 years ago was in total of 6 now in these mandirs he installed different different deities but in the mandir of vartal he installed hari krishna maharaj himself and how so well he said that this murti of hari krishna maharaj the idol of bhagwan that resides in akshardham and this idol that is in front of you are all one there is not even an atomic difference between the three this whole charitra was conducted between sadguru muktanand swami and maharaj and maharaj himself said this fact nonetheless arpuja guru ji performs a worship the upasana of hari krishna maharaj and ever since he was young he has very much tremendous love for maharaj he he would go to vartal darshan and just sit in front of hari krishna maharaj there but that murti that bhagwan swami stated this for is so divine is so out of extraordinary out of this world that millions and millions of devotees disciples of bhagwan swami narayan have experienced miracles have experienced the divine darshan of bhagwan swami narayan that's how divine that murti is and that's why premanand swami is describing hari krishna maharaj uh in his divine form and if anyone goes to visit vartal there's no way one can forget to have the darshan of hari krishna maharaj who's in the first shrine there's three shrine shrines in total first middle and last and hari krishna maharaj is in the first shrine the very first murti that's how, uh, and everyone who goes there made from maybe from outside of india or in india always have the darshan of hari krishna maharaj and maharaj always fulfills their wish that's how compassionate bhagwan swami narayan is moving on now we're going to conduct a talk uh, from kalyankanika arpuja guru ji's vato swami narayan hare swami narayan hare puja guru ji said my beloved god likes those who bow down meaning surrender god's devotee continues to surrender and continues to be liked by all 
One who endures swears, tolerates praise or insult, even ruining one's own status, bows down. That is who my beloved like, God likes. The one who becomes zero here will become my God's hero. And whoever becomes a hero here will be zero in front of my God. That that has no worth. This is a vat from Kalyam Kanika, va, uh, Kanika 2, vat number 28. Now here, in this vat, Punja Guruji talks about humility and how if we become zero here, then we become a, a hero in the eyes of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, this satsang is very divine. This satsang has the ability to destroy all of one's swabhaos, natures, and make one brahm rup, make one with, make oneness or have or attain oneness with God. But what is the step? What is the process? What is the exact way to do this? Well, first and foremost, those who bow down, those who become zero in satsang, become dasna das. There's a kadi that most of you are familiar with. Dasana dasa thaine vadije rahe satsangama bhakti teni bali manisha rachisha tena rangama. Bhagwan Swami Narayan says that those who become das, those who become humble, those who become servants of the servant of God, bhakti teni bhali manish, rachishatena rangama, I will accept his bhakti, his devotion, and I will be with him. This is the fruits of becoming the servant of not only God, but the servant of the servant of God. That's how much low we have to go. That's how much we have to suppress this ego that we have inside of us, this I-ness that we have, this, you know, kind of a, a kind of like a aura that we possess uh, that we are something. We have to completely negate it. We have to completely lower it down to a level so that Bhagwan Swami Narayan will become pleased on us. In Hari Charitramnut Sagar, Sadguru Adran Swami states, Hari ke dasa hi das, tin ke dasa hoi kar, chad kapat kar na nash, vart na shud hoi kar. Hari ke dasa hi das, not, I don't want to become just a servant of God. I want to become the servant of of the servant of God. That's how what level we have to attain. And Puja Guruji says that whoever attains this level of daspanu, this level of servitude, this level of humility, in the eyes of Bhagwan Swami Narayana, he will become a hero. But after coming here into this satsang, if we do not forsake our sabhaus that we have we had in we had in the world and we believe ourselves to be something we want to show off we want to be great we want to do something that others are in, in the eyes of others it seems like wow this person is great yes for some period of time people will cheer but those will cheer and people outside will even like it but what about in the eyes of Bhagwan? Bhagwan will be like, this person is very, very much so attracted to and likes ego, wants to be credited in this world. So then Bhagwan's vision does not become upon that person, become become upon that soul. That's why Bhagwan Swami Nalan states that those who become das, those who become humble, are the ones that stay with me. Nonetheless, Bhagwan Swami Narayan's humility is something that is beyond comprehension. 
इफ भगवान स्वामीनारायण नंद सतो सदगुरु मुक्तानंद स्वामी सदगुरु गोपाल स्वामी सदगुरु निष्कुणानंद स्वामी सदगुरु ब्रह्मानंद स्वामी एंड सदगुरु नित्यानंद स्वामी एंड सो वन एंड सो फोर्थ हैव सच अ हाई एप्टिट्यूड अ हाई लेवल ऑफ दासपनु देन इमेजिन द वन हु हैज गिवन हम दैट दासपनु महाराज हाउ ही इज वेल द ट्रू स्टोरी एट वन टाइम वॉज दैट भगवान स्वामीनारायण वॉज रिजाइडिंग इन गडा and many devotees were coming to visit um maharaj uh to gadara and on the way there a jain boy a boy was there with the whole company and he was walking with uh everyone all the devotees towards the way to gadara in an alley and a jain sadhu was there sitting and this boy had a a very bad habit of spitting on sidewalks and roadways and bhagwan swami narayan has stated in the shiksha patri for those who do do that, do that that my devotees should not spit on um pub, uh, public places sidewalks roads etc but this boy did not have any awareness he was young so he was walking and the jain sadhu was sitting there and he was just doing his work and the boy spat and when the boy spat it landed on the jain sadhu and the jain sadhu became so angry that he started to curse he started to curse about bhagwan swami narayan that look bhagwan swami narayan trains his devotees to spit on other sadhus close your shops do not sell anything to swami narayan's devotees they are the worst people they spat on me look he made a big commotion and bhagwan swami narayan found out what had happened so bhagwan swami narayan as soon as he found out he got up from where he is sitting and he went to visit the jain sadhu and right there and then without even inquiring to him the whole story maharaj folded his hands and said please forgive me this boy is innocent he is young he does not know but please forgive me and all these disciples of mine for doing such a a misconduct and right there and then the jain sadhu completely melted when he knew that this divine figure in front of him was not some ordinary person but he was extraordinary he melted right there in front of bhagwan and started to weep and cry because he he regretted making such a commotion but bhagwan swami narayan has got up and has bowed down to others that's how humble our bhagwan is our puja guru ji take his example in my experience in satsang for this much time i have never seen such humility from a sadhu like i have seen from our puja guru ji's perspective such humility cannot be found or cannot be bought in stores the level of humility puja guru ji possesses is a level which is anadi mukta level only those who are bhagwan's muktos the liberated souls but not liberated souls only anadi eternally liberated souls can possess such kind of daspanu such kind of humility and puja guru ji is one one step each and every step of his life is oozing out with humility everyone may it be him asking some smaller sadhu for something or may it be him playing musical chairs with the young kids at the age of 6 7 8 or may it be him folding his hands and admitting a mistake or may it be him serving others or may it be him sitting on a sofa yet in his voice in his body language him displaying great humility all these things 
I have experienced. And there is nothing greater than such a sadhu in the eyes of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Puja Guruji has many, many prasangs, many, many incidences. But there is one incident um, that I would like to share with you. That about three years ago when we had Sakot So, um, not in the Mandir because the Mandir Hall is uh, smaller. Uh, we actually rented the Bethel Hall, which is about two miles away from here. Um, and there we, conduct, we conducted the Sakotso on the Saturday. Very, very big Sabha. And another Sadhu, who was very, very humble, uh, came there. And Puja Guruji greeted him. But before Arti, they were standing there in front of Maharaj. They're on stage in the Bethel Hall. And there are two uh, vase flowers on the side. And um, it needed to be corrected. And the coordinating santos must have missed that. And the vase was just so that it was kind of like, kind of like uh, it was an obstacle for the other great sadhu to do dunwats. So Puja Guruji himself, instead of telling someone else, there's hundreds and hundreds of people in the sabha, there's hundreds and hundreds of people watching live broadcasting. Instead of telling some sadhu, Puja Guruji himself, through Mahima, through the perspective of Mahima, took the vase and moved it to the side so that that sadhu can perform dunwats. Even that smallest micro detail can reach so much heights if we think and think and think about it that if Guruji is at this height, he can constantly see the idol of Bhagwan. He has a conversation with Bhagwan whenever he wants. He has so much samarthi and aishwarya and so many, so much strength, yet he is still this humble then I don't have anything, then how humble should I be in this satsang? If we even think like this, automatically we would become humble. If we think about the qualities of the sadhus that we have received and their qualities, Bhagwan Swaminarayan has put with us sadhus all around us so that we can attain authentic kalyan like this. But we just have to see their qualities and their great qualities that we have received if we think about that, automatically we would become humble. Because we know that these sadhus are not like the people of the world. These sadhus are not ordinary. They're out of this world. They're from Akshardham. Thinking in this way, if we think about their qualities, their virtues, then our heart will become fulfilled. Nonetheless, we would actually develop their virtues and we would have peace at heart. But this is the way of humility. One has to look at one's faults and one has to look at others' good qualities. And slowly but surely, if when one compares and makes oneself inferior and makes everyone else superior, according to the Vachnamrut Gurdada, first chapter 58, when that process, that chemical process occurs, that's the way that one attains solid, firm daspanu, or humility. And when humility is attained, slowly but surely it grows in processes. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan, it's kind of like glue. Bhagwan Swaminarayan sticks to that, and he cannot be removed no matter what, because that person is hu humble. That's why humility is such an important factor and Puja Guruji has mentioned it here in this Kalyankanika Vat. So we are very, very fortunate to have such Nekantik Satpurush, this Maharaj and this Satsang and these Sadhus and Bhaktos. It's just a matter of staying Das Nadas, folding our hands, admitting our mistakes, asking for forgiveness and moving on looking at others' good qualities and perceiving one's faults. This is the most mentioned topic that Bhagwan Swamiran states in the Vachnamrut. Because Bhagwan states that by looking at one's faults and others' qualities, one increases in satsang. 
one progresses in satsang and by looking at one's good qualities and others faults one goes down the slope and one regresses that's why bhagwan swamiran has showed us this trick that he wants us to utilize and use and that's why puja guruji has given us this trick that one who becomes zero in this satsang becomes a hero in bhagwan's eyes even if one remembers this small statement then it would go a long way in our life when we do encounter such kind of situations and finally moving on to puja guruji's life stories something that i always cherish and something that's very very touching to the heart there's two stories the title of these two stories they go one hand in hand is to fulfill a devotee's wish one time puja guruji in the year of 2017 was traveling in on vichran here in the united states now when puja guruji comes for vichran on the united in the united states uh he comes so for 2 to 3 months but there are so many devotees in so many areas that his schedule is very very packed uh packed so that every one or two days he has to keep moving and moving to devotees homes nonetheless puja guruji has an allergy problem in his nose where uh pollen and other dust particles kind of um swell up uh his face and his skin irritates all these different kinds of things happen and his uh whole uh, sinus kind of acts up so carpet going on carpet staying at homes that have carpet is very difficult for puja guruji yet he bears this so that that devotee becomes happy and progresses in satsang so anyways guruji would come to uh, vichran and uh, he would travel in many states and many the coordinating santos would uh, schedule his um his travel dates accordingly they would call devotees from ahead of time and he, uh, they would uh, exactly adjust to you know where where and where and when what time guruji will come to your home your home like that now what happened was that one of our bhagats uh, nokan bhagat uh, he right now currently lives in indiana but he used to live in virginia uh, and he he decided that he wanted to have puja guruji come to his home but the problem was that his home was very small it was an apartment it was a little jam packed and nonetheless puja guruji knew that he was a gurukul vidyarthi now the coordinating santos that were managing the trip they had decided that they would go to richmond where the nokan bhagat lives but they decided to uh, book uh, another bhagat's home which was very big in size and cozy for puja guruji and not too cluttered now puja guruji is just asking the schedule beforehand and um he said that aren't we going to nokan bhagat's house to stay and the santo said that we are not going to stay guruji we'll do padramni there because um you know it's not very equipped that you can stay there and actually live in comfort he said why so why not and they explained the situation then guruji said that he is our gurukul vidyarthi and it's his bhav it's his very much greetings and emotion that he wants to call thakur ji maharaj and myself and santosh to his home so we will go there and we will stay two days and from ahead even if there is many many other luxurious homes but guruji denied that not for his not showing or not remembering his own comfort but remembering the bhav and the emotion of this one bhagat to fulfill it and guruji said even if i get allergies so be it but i want to please this bhagat imagine the bhav of puja guruji looking and seeing bhagwan inside of everyone what a high level that it is completely beyond comprehension but guruji went there nokan bhagat became so ecstatic he even cried i was there at that moment he cried because guruji came to his house he could not believe it and from there nokan bhagat became so pleased that you know guruji fulfilled all his wishes he stayed there for 2 days and he left afterwards but nokan bhagat think about how much of a of a of a impression guruji made on him in his heart 
and he would never he would never be able to f- uh, forget. Now suppose Guruji never comes to his home, he would never mind. But because at this one time Guruji fulfilled his wish, and came to his home and stayed for two solid days. That's how Guruji fulfilled this Bhagat's wish. Another Bhagat, by the name of Suresh, was a 13-year-old boy in India who came to Kandari Gurukul just to visit Guruji and uh, his financial status was very weak. So Guruji said that I'll keep you here in the Gurukul and you can study free of charge without any kind of, uh, uh, you don't have to pay even a fee. And Suras studied uh, throughout the Gurukul until, until uh, the standard 12. And then... Um, Guruji paid for his fee from that from the age of 13 to 18 five years Puji Guruji paid for his fee and then he uh, finally graduated but Suresh's financial status his parents' financial status was very weak so afterwards Guruji would receive messages phone calls from Suresh he lived a little far away but in his mind, Suresh's mind, in his heart, he had a desire that Puja Guruji comes to my house to do Padramni. But he didn't have the guts to tell Guruji because his home was pretty much a grass hut. It was just two, a two-room grass hut with no bathroom, no sinks, nothing. That's how poor of a situation he had. And also it was very far away. But Puja Guruji, through his omniscient powers, one time when he talked to him, he said, Suresh, why don't you ever call me on Padramni ever? Call me on Padramni, I'll come. And Suresh there cried right there and then. He cried and he said, Guruji, I, I wanted to. I wanted to call you. I wanted to invite you, but I didn't have the courage to do so because my house is just a hut. It's just a grass hut. There's nothing, no facilities. Guruji said, I'm not coming for the facilities. I'm coming to fulfill your heart's wish. I'm fu- I'm coming to fulfill your wish as a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. I'm coming to fulfill not only you, but all those around who you live and have them also benefit by having Thakurji Maharaj's darshan. Look at the vision of Buja Guruji. He goes there for one person. Nonetheless, he also performs the kalyana of countless neighbors, animals, birds, so many on the way there. This is the divine and great vision of the Akantik Satpurush. And Guruji went there to Suresh's house. Guruji said, I, did not, I do not need any luxuries. He took a couple of santos with him and he stayed there. And there was not any mattresses, there was not any blankets, and there was nothing to sit on. Yet Guruji sat on the floor with the sadhu's keshu, his upper garment, folded. And there he fulfilled Suresh's wish. Imagine the impression of Suresh. And Suresh will remember this throughout his life. And at the end, when he remembers Puja Guruji, then Maharaj and Guruji will come and take him to Akshradham. That's how great of an impression Puja Guruji made on this Suresh. Just by one act of Puja Guruji going to his house, his grass hut, which was far away for just a couple of hours and sitting on the floor. That's how great of an impression he made. And through that impression, that's one soul's authentic Lian will be fulfilled. Guruji's vision is so high, is so different, is extraordinary that no ordinary human can ever detect the, mo- the intentions of this Ekantik Satpurush. Yet we are very, very fortunate to receive Puja Guruji and how great he is. It's very hard to fathom, but all we can do is pray to Maharaj, pray to Guruji to explain the greatness of Maharaj and yourself. Please explain how you are, your form, how great you are, so that we can join in Maharaj, we can actually join in Maharaj, and we can attain Akshradham. This is the only thing to ask for. Where, what else do we need in this world? Therefore, 
This Yua Sabah Course 9, conducted of Kirtan, Vat of Kalyankanika, and Stories in the Life of Puja Guruji. The examination will take place in the month of June. Right now, uh, there's just a couple more courses left, and then uh, you have, you'll have you have time to study, and then the examination will take place. You, will be, uh, you can email, if you are a new person, you can email for the course, or else it's usually uploaded on WhatsApp. Uh, and uh, the groups. So this is U.S. about course nine. Saying this, my humble.